So I'm Kathy Romy from WFHB in Bloomington, Indiana. I'm speaking to Will Grove White, member of the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain, who will be appearing in concert at the Buzz Kirk Chumley Theater in Bloomington, Indiana on Thursday, March 21st at 8 p.m. Welcome, Will. Hi, Kathy. Oh, hi. So nice of you to take some time to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. No, at all. Great to talk. You know, this this is not your first U.S. tour. No, uh, we've been many times before, yeah. Yeah. We're, it's yeah. starting to feel like our second home. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the best things about performing for U.S. audiences? Oh, well, they're always very warm uh, and receptive audiences that, that we've played to so far, I should say. You know, we never know what the next audience in Bloomington will be like. They're right. a very difficult audience. No, they're wonderful. <laughs> uh the further west you go, the more Hawaiian shirts you see. I bet, yeah, um, sure. <laughs> and uh, I remember when we played in Carnegie Hall, lots and lots of people who I kept thinking Larry David was in the audience, but then I realized oh my God. the guy behind him looked like Larry David as well. And so um, no, it was great audiences and, um, and lots of ukulele players uh, we found. Uh, when we did a Christmas tour, we did some play-along music. So the audiences oh, built their fun. ukuleles. And there was lots of people bringing their ukuleles along. Yeah. What fun. Yeah. So, yeah, you played at Carnegie Hall. You've played for the Queen. You've played at these great halls all over Europe. Yes. And when we started in the band 35 years ago, playing in pubs in London, we always thought it'd be nice. You know, we thought it was good enough, but we didn't think we'd get the chance to do all these great things. But then suddenly you're in Sydney Opera House with your ukulele thinking, well, here we go. A strange oh, story. My. Yeah. I, yeah, no kidding. And when you come to Bloomington, you're going to be in this very small, lovely, restored sort of art deco. I remember theater. it well from last do time. I, I, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Straight out of sort of back to the future. Right. <laughs> About 600 seats. So yeah. what what are your favorite kind of venues to perform in? Oh, well, Do you I like the smaller ones? The smaller ones are the best, yeah, because we're mm -hmm. playing such small instruments. It's nice for people to be able to see the things. Some of the theatres that we're playing in Germany, certainly sort of two or 3,000 seaters, and you wonder what the people at the back, they seem to enjoy right. themselves, but I... The ukuleles must look like little pinpricks. Um, yeah, right. But, uh, but we managed to fill the place with sound and people have a Isn't good time. That so that's, Isn't that something? Yeah. You know who played in this theater that you're going to be playing in in Bloomington? Someone famous? It's got to be Hoagie Carmichael, hasn't it? You are correct. Yeah. Yes. Come on. He absolutely yeah. did. Yeah. And of course, he, you know, this is man. his hometown. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's a real hero of mine, actually, because uh, my grandfather used to play me Hoagie Carmichael songs on the piano. The Hong Kong Blues was my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. And uh, the old Music Master and, uh, oh, yeah. God. I mean, and, the, and then, of course, George Romo and mine and all the great ones. You know. Oh, well, I, yeah, I shall try and remember to bring my Hong Kong Blues music. We'll see if we you can should. rustle up a rendition. That would be great. Well, his spirit is still present there, so um, that yeah, will help. Yeah, well, it's amazing. You know, some of the venues you realize, my God, uh, Ray Charles sat here or, yeah. you know, Aretha Franklin stood over there or, you know, and you, there we are, spoiling the image with our ukuleles, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think that's fair to say you're spoiling it at all. <laughs> I joined when I was 16 years old. Yeah, that's yeah. what I read. That's amazing. Yeah. So tell that story. I was playing the ukulele on my own. Uh, as you can imagine, not many other young kids wanted to play the ukulele. But I was listening to Jimi Hendrix and all this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I heard about this band in a pub in London that was playing Jimi Hendrix on ukulele. So I had to go and see them. And I became a regular groupie <laughs> of theirs in the very small top room of a pub, you know, with about 30 people. Right. And then hung around long enough that they couldn't get rid of me. And then so here we are, <laughs> whatever, wow. 30 years later. Yeah. And here you are traveling all over the world with them. Yes, it's, it's like I say, you know, at school, my career's advice people never offered me this opportunity. You know, yeah, never, I bet they I, did. It was yeah. never, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do a lot of other things. I mean, you're a performing musician, obviously, but you're an author, your book. <laughs> Yeah, Get I wrote lucky a book. with the ukulele. Well, it's now retitled "Ukulele for Beginners," which there is a go. rather a rather sadder title. But this is yeah. Yeah, Amazon search algorithms demand it, 
so I'm told. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> um, but no, that was great fun to write. We found out lots of interesting things about lots of ukulele players all over the world. Like um, uh-huh. even Neil Armstrong was a ukulele player. When he got back from the moon, he uh, <laughs> yeah, played his ukulele. And... Isn't that great? Well, we have yeah. that in our local library. Oh, For those great. Those that are listening, they can go pick up a copy and uh, yeah, take a good. look at it. Absolutely. You do songwriting, arranging, a lot of other, you have other projects. Yeah, I keep myself busy, you know, writing music, both sort of TV things and little other side projects from the Ukes. But the ukulele orchestra is the main thing for all of us, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, that's where mm-hmm. we invest most of our energy into. But everyone in the band has got some other skills and uh, creative projects yeah. going. So it's a, it's a really interesting group of people. It yeah. really is. I've been lucky enough to see you several times, but what would you tell a first-time attender to one of your concerts, what they could expect? Well, I think if, if you don't know what to expect, the main emotion that you'll, um, you'll feel after hearing the first song or two is relief, because, um, <laughs> because the, the name isn't the most enticing title. The ukulele of Great Britain sounds kind of stuffy and a bit yeah. um, too many ukuleles, but... I think after you've heard a couple of tunes, you think, oh, God, this is going to be quite fun, you know, and it's going to be, I'll be all right when you hear some um, ACDC on ukulele. Right. And, you know. <laughs> that's that's well put, and I think that's exactly right. It's a wonderful surprise. Yeah. It's not yeah. what you're expecting. And we like to have fun with the audience, and we want people to have a good time. It's quite, in that sense, a sort of old-fashioned entertainment in that, you know, yes. we like to see an audience leaving the place smiling and with their toes tapping and, Yes, and feeling exactly. good about life because there's enough misery in the world. Um, Agreed. To uh, you know, especially here in Britain at the moment. But yeah, another, yeah, yeah. And, that's another and, yeah. story, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we're making you guys look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we both got our troubles. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking the time today to just speak to me for a few minutes. Not and, at uh, all. Well, I look forward so to sweet. catching Bloomington and having good time there. We're looking forward to getting out to America. Yeah, well, we can't wait to have you. And uh, thanks so much for today. Not at all. All right.